So here's kind of a fun one. I had a storyline question recently about whether you can use your own shapes for buttons rather than use Storyline's built-in buttons. And you certainly can. Here's an example of where I've used this little starburst shape that I drew on my slide with Storyline's shape tool. And you can see when I mouse over it, it's got a kind of subtle hover state to it, right? And if I press my mouse button, we'll see the down state, which has a nice little outline, just like the built-in buttons do. And then this particular button, when I release it, it's going to reveal a layer. And in the layer, I've got another shape that I've used as a button, and it too has that same hover state, down state, and then when I release, it's going to hide that layer. So the cool thing is if you want to draw your own shapes to use as buttons like this, you don't have to run around adding all of those object states to all of those shapes manually to make them look and behave like a button, right? Instead, you can use one of Storyline's built-in buttons to copy the states from with just a couple clicks. I want to show you how you can do that. So here we are at a blank slide. I'm going to come up to the Insert tab and draw a couple of shapes. Let's draw, let's use a circle. I'm going to hold down a sh my Shift key and constrain this so it's a nice round shape. And let's add a couple of more too. Maybe a starburst like that. And then maybe, mm, how about an arrow? Arrows are pretty common, like if you want to maybe create some buttons for your own navigation on your slide, right? So when you draw a shape, you've probably noticed that it only has one state. Down here in the states panel, it's just got a state of normal, unless you add more yourself. But when you draw a button, check this out. On the insert tab, I'm going to come over here to button and choose one of these button styles. And when you do that, it's going to come with a bunch of states already in place. Hover, down, visited, disabled. They're already there for you. And what we're going to do is copy those to the buttons that we've drawn. And then once we do that, we wouldn't even really need to keep this built-in button if we didn't need it or want it. So really the only thing we need to do is give this button the color that we want, and then we'll copy the formatting. So you can choose you know, from the colors that are shown here in the styles area. These colors are all coming from your uh, color theme of your project, and they're kind of nice. They've got some of them are kind of a glassy look or a gradient look, so those are nice options. Or you can also go to the button fill area and choose one of these colors or go with a standard color. Or if you want to get really crazy with something very specific, you could even click more fill colors and enter you know, a really precise color value. I'm going to go with purple because I kind of like that one on this gray background. It looks pretty nice. And now that we've done that, we can go ahead and copy the formatting. And the way that we do it is on the Home tab, we've got this feature called a Format Painter. Now if I click Format Painter once while that purple button is selected, that's going to allow me to copy the purple button's formatting to one other shape. But I've got three shapes here that I want to copy it to, so I'm actually going to double click my Format Painter because that's going to keep it active until I turn it off. And you'll notice it's going to have a little you know, paintbrush icon there on my cursor. That just means that it's active. And now I can click my circle, my starburst, and my arrow. And down here at the bottom in the states panel, you'll see that all of those states are now all in place for me. It happens as if by magic. <laughs> and, now, and that part's done. Now as far as making the buttons do something, you can just add your own trigger for that. And you probably know if you've worked with buttons before that when you insert a button, Storyline adds this little option over here in the trigger panel called Add Trigger for that option or for that object just because it assumes you know that you want to trigger something to happen when the learner clicks on the button but that's really the only difference here if you're using your own shape as a button like maybe this circle you can add your own trigger just as quickly by coming over to the trigger panel and selecting create a new trigger and then you can use this little trigger wizard to say exactly what you want to have happen when the learner clicks on that shape so let's say we want them to jump to the first slide when they click on the oval. We could set it up just that quickly. And then of course you can add text to your, um, you know, your new button if you want. You don't have to have a separate text box for that. You just select the shape and then let's just call this home or whatever you want. And you can of course change the color. Maybe white would look better. And now let's go ahead and we'll preview the whole scene and see how it looks. So here's our first slide. We can skip that and here's our slide with the buttons that we made. Here's the ready-made one, but the other ones over here that we created are behaving the same. They have a nice little hover state. Here's the one that has the trigger applied to it. So when we press and hold, we'll see the, so the uh, down state. And then when I release, we should go right to our um, first slide. So it's really that easy. That's how it works. Pretty cool that you can turn any shape you want into a button in Storyline.